Okay, boys and girls, today we're doing a retro review on the original on the original Leatherman PST or Pocket Survival Tool. We're going to be taking a look at the tool set and what I think of the PST. And ultimately, the pr primary purpose of this video is to kind of talk about and see what is the validity or what is the usefulness of the PST in a modern or in 2021. Is this still a good choice? Should you pick one up? Even though they are cheaper, are they still pretty useful tools in the wilderness and in EDC. So let's jump right into it. Okay guys, so today we are taking a look at the Leatherman Pocket Survival Tool. Now this is the original PST, not the PST2, though that one will probably be coming sometime in the future. I've really been on a big kick for vintage tools here of late, so I've been picking up a lot of older tools, including the original PST. Now, like I said, the primary reason now like I said in the beginning of this video, the primary reason why I wanted to get a PST is I wanted to put it head to head or at least compare it to some of the newer tools, things like the Charge Plus, the Surge Plus, or I think I have the Surge Original on me today, and see what are they like in comparison, you know, what is the tool set like, what is the size like, and what is the weight like. So are these still valid, good options for a survival kit? And moreover, should you pick one up? Because the big thing is these PSTs can pretty regularly be got for around 50 to 40 bucks, whereas if you're buying a Surge or a Charge or even a Wave, you're going to be spending upwards of $100. So are these still good tools? Should you pick up one of these instead of something new? So let's jump right into it. So starting off with the tool set for the charge or sorry for the PST you have the original pliers which are actually my favorite. You have very fine teeth there for the needle nose then getting into the regular pliers you have the larger teeth. You also have standard wire cutters so this, these do not feature wire cutters and then hardened wire cutters and it does definitely look like on this guy someone tried to cut hardened wire so it's a little bit of a click when you get to the wire cutters but these are just standard wire cutters and of course you do not have any wire crimpers down there. Moving over to the handles, of course you have nothing externally available. This was before Leatherman started doing that, so everything is on the inside. On the left side of the handles, you have your file, double-sided, so you have a fine uh, kind of a fine file on this side and a cross-cut pattern on this side. You also have a very fine kind of micro flathead screwdriver and in addition to those tools, you also have a can opener, and once again, this was before Leatherman started doing the wire strippers, so this is just a can opener, and then you also have a Phillips head screwdriver right there. So those are your handful of tools on that side. Now going over to the right side is where you have your cutting options, so you have your main plane blade right there, you also have your awl, which I actually really dig these old school awls. I think they look so cool. They're kind of sharp actually, but you have your awl there and then you have your two uh, flathead screwdrivers right there of varying sizes. So you have three flathead screwdrivers in total and one in pretty much every size. Now, I'm not actually entirely sure why Leatherman, especially back in these days, chose to put so many gosh darn flathead screwdrivers on their tools. I feel like flathead screwdrivers were really easy to make, so they're like, let's just make a bunch of them and put them in here for tools. Uh, they're definitely not my favorite, and this is definitely not my favorite favorite tool set, especially for the wilderness because we are missing a saw. But aside from that, I actually like the tool set quite a bit. Now going over to size, this thing is pretty darn tiny. I think the only way to properly illustrate the size of this tool is to actually bring out some more Leathermans. And we have the Charge Plus, the original, the kind of uh, the one in the aluminum handles. And we also have a Gen 1 Surge. Uh, so this thing is, of course, one of the largest tools you can get from Leatherman, and seeing it next to a original PST, it absolutely dwarfs it in thickness, in size. It makes the PST makes the uh, surge look like a giant. 
and so it's kind of funny looking at them together. But it, this thing is absolutely massive versus the little PST. And going over to the charge, funny enough, the charge and the PST are actually about the same size as you can see in length. It's just where they uh, really bridge off is in thickness. So. The thickness on the Charge Plus is pretty substantial or noticeably thicker, but it is actually about the same size as the Charge, so I found that pretty cool because the Charge is my favorite uh, multi-tool from Leatherman, so seeing the size difference was pretty cool. So that's what it looks like from a size difference. This thing is definitely noticeably tinier than its newer generation offspring, if you will. Uh, but it definitely also lacks a lot of the features that the newer tools have. So where does this place for a pocket survival tool? So for me, in the original kind of context of a PST or pocket survival tool, I would probably say that this is not the best tool for that. Now it's a cool tool to own, it's a cool vintage tool, and we'll talk about EDC in a little bit, but from a wilderness perspective, this definitely would not be my carry, and that's primarily due to the fact that it's one, lacking a saw, and two, it really doesn't have a lot of options that are particularly useful or pertinent to wilderness or outdoor activity. And this is the same thing in the same reason why I don't recommend a lot of Victorinox or Swiss Army knives for outdoors, even though they were built originally for the outdoors. It's just that they have a lot of tools that are kind of weird for outside. And so once again, when we look at this whole left side here of the handles on the PST, you know, realistically, the file might see a little bit of use in wilderness activities and the can opener may see some use depending on you know what kind of food you're carrying but realistically these two screwdrivers are pretty useless for most wilderness activities and then of course the most useful of all is going to be the blade and unfortunately the blade on this side is pretty small so if you look this is the uh, main blade and we'll just pull out uh, the charge because this is at least comparably sized so the charge has a blade that while not too far off is definitely wider and longer so you're left with a pretty small main blade and this is your only bladed option at least with something like a charge you know you have your main blade you also have your fully serrated blade so you have a couple cutting options and you also have a saw so definitely a little bit better for outdoor wilderness activities so you only have that main blade and that main blade is pretty small then turning over to the all if I can fish that one out for you the all is about the only other tool that I'm really after for outdoor activity or wilderness activity and once again this is a pretty small all so going over to the surge because the charge actually does not have it all but you know going over to the surge this is the size of the all on a surge and this is the size of the all on the PST pretty small once again and also pretty puny and kind of pathetic in comparison to the robust and built up all that is on a surge so you know looking back at it it's a really good effort probably a good first try for uh, Leatherman but realistically the only tools I would use in the outdoors with a PST are the main blade the awl and of course the pliers that's really about it and so when you factor that you're carrying a whole bunch of other tools namely a whole bunch of other flathead screwdrivers probably not the best choice for the wilderness unless you retrofit those flathead screwdrivers to maybe be like a chisel or something along those lines which you certainly could do so ultimately, what do I think of this blade for everyday carry? Now for everyday carry, this is really going to be more of an arguable statement because it depends on what you do on a daily basis. For me, I don't really use screwdrivers a lot. So for me, I would probably be gravitating still towards, this is one of my ADC multi-tools, a charge. And I like the charge primarily because it has things like scissors. It does have you know, flathead screwdriver, but it also has a micro screwdriver, and you're going to be encountering 
things that might need a micro screwdriver more realistically in the wilderness, or sorry, in everyday carry or everyday situations. You also have your exchangeable bit driver, so that's a little bit more useful for, you know, realistic things that when you do need a Phillips head or flathead screwdriver, you have what you need there in a pinch. So overall, this thing could be a pretty good EDC multi-tool if it meets your needs. If you like the file, it has a file for you. If you like the blade, it does have a pretty accessible blade. It is a pretty good blade for EDC. Ultimately, I would be sooner to EDC this than I would be to carry this in the wilderness, but even still, it probably is not the best tool for EDC. That being said, it actually might work out for your EDC depending on what your needs are. And if it does, I would say go for it. Not only because it's a really cool vintage piece, you know, this thing has some serious heritage to it, but also it's a pretty small tool. This is the type of tool that realistically, I think the reason why we get belt sheets for our multi-tools or pocket clips for our new multi-tools is because they have become so much larger and more bulky that you know this thing you could just throw in a pocket and because there's nothing sticking out, it's flat, it's very smooth, it's very rounded. You know, this can sit in your pocket and you might feel it, it has a little bit of heft to it, but ultimately, you can throw this in your pocket and forget you have it. Whereas if you throw either of these in your pocket, you will not forget that you have either of them. So the biggest advantage in an EDC or even a survival situation is the fact that the PST is thin, that it's reasonably light, it's very compact. You can throw it in a pocket and forget it exists. And that is something that you definitely cannot do with modern tools. Okay guys, so that's been my retro review on the Leatherman PST, basically 20 years later. It's a really cool tool, it's a great way for Leatherman to start, but definitely I would recommend, for the sake of practicality, check out newer Leathermans. They are more expensive, but they are more useful, and if you just so happen to realize that the PST can fit the bill, I'd recommend Rocket One. It's pretty cool indefinitely. If I did EDC gear check on any of my friends and they whipped out a original PST, was like, yeah, this is my EDC multi tool. I would be impressed for sure. So, anyways, guys, that's what I have to say about the Leatherman PST. It is a cool tool, just maybe not the most practical nowadays. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.